a couple of days ago, I asked you guys on Instagram what you were interested to see and a vast majority of you said that you were interested in learning how to travel long distance on a motorcycle. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my tips and tricks that I personally use and implement on my long distance motorcycle travel. Part of this video is sponsored by Omaze and they are giving away a customized Indian Challenger. Stay tuned for more information or go check out omaze.com slash her two wheels. Tips and tricks on riding long distance on a motorcycle. I will let you guys know, full disclosure, I'm not a professional. I have only been riding motorcycles for six years. This is my very first touring motorcycle and I have finally started to tour using this bike. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Jess and this is my personal motorcycle. I have two Harley Davidsons, but I have ridden over half a dozen of many other different motorcycles, manufacturers, brand styles, everything. So I feel like I can give you a pretty good variety of information on why I went with the motorcycles I went with and why I travel the way I travel. Your comfort level. I, it took me a lot of times trying to ride a motorcycle long distance before I really understood what long distance motorcycle riding means. If you look at any GPS and it tells you it's gonna take eight hours to get to a destination, that's if you're in a car. <laughs> On a motorcycle, it's a lot different. They don't take into consideration your frequent stops for gas, your frequent stops for stretching or restroom breaks or to just take in the scenery. I would say when you are first starting to travel long distance on a motorcycle, add at least two hours to any GPS direction coordinates whatsoever and prepare yourself mentally for the amount of physical endurance it's gonna to take to ride long distance. Next up, figure out what kind of riding you're actually gonna be doing. Are you to be crushing miles on the highway or taking nice, slow, scenic back roads in order to get to your destination? If you look here, I have a touring motorcycle with a fixed fairing because I am a highway queen. I crush miles on the highway and I bought the motorcycle suited for my kind of riding. Now, if you guys are more into leisurely riding, off-road riding, stuff like that, maybe look into a motorcycle that can handle things off the highway. Probably the next most important thing is different for every single person, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about gear. And I know a lot of you guys ride with your select minimal gear. A lot of you ride with all the gear all the time, but I will say gear is a big one for me personally because I it allows me to endure any weather situation, it allows me to feel protected from the elements, protected from other people, stuff like that. So when I know that I am safe and protected in my gear that works for the type of riding that I'm doing, I, it gives me a little bit more peace of mind and allows me to travel a lot further. Rain gear. Nobody wants to wear rain gear. I envy you if you live in a location without rain, but I will greatly, greatly, greatly advise that the proper gear that keeps you in the saddle the longest is going to be your best friend and worth every single penny you can spend on it. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, I just recently finished my very first iron butt challenge where I rode from Tampa, Florida up to Columbus, Ohio, a little over 1100 miles in about 15 hours. And I'm very lucky to tell you that I didn't get Get stuck in any rain, but I did deal with a lot of really cold mornings and cold evenings. So I had my heated gear with me. I had my proper full face helmet, gloves to keep my hand warm. I utilized the features of my motorcycle to help me stay comfortable. So that could be heated grips, highway pegs. I'll maneuver my luggage on my pack to act as a backrest. Just the proper gear is what's gonna give you your stamina. And don't forget earplugs. I think one of the next most important things is to plan your route. If you know that you're gonna go through a big city through a really busy time of day and you're gonna get stuck in traffic, maybe shift your route and your leave time a couple hours up or a couple hours later. Nothing kills your mood and exhausts you more than getting stuck in traffic or having to go through construction or you're in rush hour and there's an accident. So if you can try to avoid those situations just simply by controlling your time and space around you. This next one might sound a bit like hippie mumbo jumbo, but you have got to be in the right headspace. So for me personally, that means getting together a really good playlist or a radio station that I know I'm going to enjoy. And I listen to music. Some people prefer audio books, others prefer podcasts. For me, it's music because I don't really catch myself thinking of anything critically while I'm listening. I'm just enjoying the rhythm, the lyrics, the music, and 
before I know it, a couple hours pass while I'm in the saddle just jamming out. So make sure you keep your mind in a positive place because once you're traveling long distance on a motorcycle, you are in your own head for a long time. My next tip is to, first of all, I don't think you're gonna know how to do a lot of this unless you actually travel and experience this yourself. But like I said, these are my personal tips. I, especially on a touring motorcycle, I can travel longer miles than I could when I was on my Dyna. I have also ridden my Harley Davidson Dyna from Orlando, Florida back up to Columbus, Ohio. So I've ridden over a thousand miles on each bikes in one shot a couple times. So I feel like I can give you a better gauge on my comparison to one or the other. So for me on the Dyna, I had to stop no later than 130 miles every single time. A, because I needed to get gas and B, because I thought my body was breaking. <laughs> uh, on the road glide, that's completely different. Sometimes I can go 200 miles without stopping for gas and I'm perfectly fine. My body's comfortable. I'm not hurting, my back isn't aching, and the bike has a larger gas tank. For you, it might be different. You might be on a motorcycle that cannot go farther than 100 miles without stopping to refill. You might have health issues that keeps you out of the saddle longer than in the saddle. You need to do frequent stretches, take bathroom breaks, or hydrate. Um, everybody is different. I personally am the worst to tell you about hydration on a motorcycle because I tend to almost not drink anything while I'm riding because then I have to stop to pee more often. So it's just one of those things. But uh, I do bring hydration tabs with me and electrolytes. So I don't let myself run ragged and I don't let myself get to a dangerous level of not being, you know, malnourished. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I have ridden so many different kinds of motorcycles and unfortunately I do love them all. So it's really hard for me to pick and choose what bikes I actually wanna buy personally. So if I were you, I would pay attention to this next section of the video because it's information on how you can win a brand new Indian Challenger that has been customized by Carrie Hart. Now Carrie Hart also helps back the Good Ride nonprofit organization, which seeks to help out veterans in need. So every donation towards this giveaway goes towards supporting this good cause. So I love partnering with Omaze as always, because it is a win-win situation. Somebody wins a motorcycle and the experience of a lifetime while still supporting a good ride. <laughs> no pun intended, a good cause. So the winner of this giveaway is going to score a custom built Indian Challenger reimagined by motocross legend, Carrie Hart. You can find your freedom on the open road with this one of a kind motorcycle, as well as supporting good rides to help veterans in need. As you'll know, I have a personal affliction for touring motorcycles, baggers specifically, and I have ridden the Indian Challenger before, and I can tell you guys right now, it's an amazing motorcycle. So I'm really excited to give you the opportunity to win this specific bike because I know personally it's an amazing machine. I do love customizing motorcycles. I'm no Carrie Hart, but uh, I think I have a little bit of taste if I do say so myself. <laughs> a little bit about the foundation that you'll be helping. As I mentioned, A Good Ride is founded by Carrie Hart and they seek to give back through motorcycle riding. In partnership with the Infinite Hero Foundation, proceeds from Good Ride go directly towards helping veterans in need. Your donation can help access innovative rehabilitation programs that access the unique needs of veterans and their families. I should mention, um, US winners will get free shipping and taxes included on this bike. So if you cannot wait anymore, please check out omaze.com slash her two wheels. I will have it linked down in the description and in the pinned comment, and every donation goes towards a good cause. So let's get back to the video. Road trip essentials. Uh, I by no means know how to work on motorcycles at all. I know how to ride motorcycles. I hate wrenching on them. Maybe one of these days I'll take some educational courses to help me on the side of the road if I ever need it. But until then, I keep the bare minimum with me. I keep a small compact toolkit. Uh, I go through my motorcycle and figure out which nuts and bolts and Allen keys and blah, 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 all of that stuff I need. So I have a little toolkit on my bike with those things, as well as a rechargeable tire pressure gauge, a jump start kit, and a tire patch kit, like a tire repair kit for puncture holes. I have mag wheels. I actually prefer traveling with mag wheels instead of spoke wheels, because if I do get a flat on the side of the road, it's a bit more difficult to patch a tube, nearly impossible, than it is to just patch a regular tire. I also keep a first aid kit on me as well as rain gear all the time. The one thing I really need to add to my roadside essentials trip is a uh, 
sunscreen. I always forget to bring sunscreen. This next tip is something, it's a personal choice. I always do it, but I use multiple different travel apps while I'm riding. So I will use anything from Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze. I'll use some personal motorcycle specific apps. I will use multiple different platforms to plan out my trip and see what kind of results I get based on geographic locations, events, like uh, all of the data comes from different places. And so I'll pick my best route by using multiple resources. Once I do use those apps while I'm traveling, I will share my location with A, the people I'm visiting, B, my friends and family, or C, just like maybe some of you guys on the internet, if I'm coming to meet up with you for an event or stuff like that, I will let you guys know where I am on the road. Now on the flip side of that coin, uh, and this is especially for my lady friends who like to travel solo, I do not ever post in real time when I'm traveling. You, you have to protect yourself, whether that's physically or on the internet, but you will never see me post in real time where I am on the road because I do not want someone to interject, meet up, or stop me. Now that's not to say I haven't ran into you guys while I'm like, pumping gas or stopping at a restaurant on the side of the highway. That happens all the time and that's totally fine, like nothing to worry about. But I don't wanna give somebody the preconceived notion that they can meet up with me on the road and ride somewhere when that is absolutely inappropriate. So protect yourself, never post in real time, never say what route you're taking, where you're gonna be when you're leaving, stuff like that. Mostly to my female friends who travel solo because it is a real thing and I have had some real issues while traveling solo. And then one of the easiest, most fun things you guys can do when you are planning to take your first long distance motorcycle trip is start small. Find some place 50 miles away, ride there, have lunch, grab a coffee, turn around and ride home. You know, that's a hundred miles round trip. See how you do and how you feel. Or find somewhere that's at least one tank of gas away, ride all the way there, fill up your tank of gas and then ride back home. Start small. It's fantastic practice. It lets you get alone time with your motorcycle and really learn the ins and outs of how your bike rides where it's happy. Um, the one thing I notice is when I ride highways, my RPM is happy like right around 3.2 thousand RPM. And that's when the bike just sings. It, it, he just loves going that speed, whatever speed it is. It's usually right around 80, 85. And that's where I see my most fuel efficiency. And that's where I'm in my head at the most comfortable. So take the time, go on practice rides, go meet up with your friends and family, ride to the holidays this year and just see how it goes. This tip is also another personal preference. I know a lot of people who travel long distance on their motorcycle, they kind of like to just wing it, you know, ride until you can't ride anymore and then look for a place to stop and stay. I'm kind of the opposite. I love riding to a destination. So if I know I will be staying in a specific city at a specific hotel, I will pre-plan and book that hotel or that campsite probably a week in advance, just so I know I will have a place to safely lay my head that night after an exhausting day in the saddle. So my best advice is to pre-plan in advance and know that you will have someplace safe to rest your head that night when you need a real break. As cheesy as it is, you have to have fun with it. Traveling on a motorcycle is something, unless you don't have a vehicle, it's something nobody has to do. We choose to do it because it's an adventure. You never know what's around the corner. It's It makes getting from point A to point B that much more exciting because you have something to do in between. So have fun with it, hang out with your friends, take the pictures, find funny places to stop on the side of the road. The memories that you build on a motorcycle and the bond that you create with the bike you're with is unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life before. And I look forward to planning my route and meeting up with my friends and what we're gonna do and how I'm gonna pack and all of those things. It's, it's all encompassing of why I like to travel on a motorcycle. Obviously, many of you guys are not new to this, but I appreciate you for watching this video. Um, please leave a comment on your number one tip for long distance motorcycle travel down in the comment section so anybody else watching this video can scroll down and get way more tips and tricks than I can provide in one video. Once again, thank you so much to Amaze for sponsoring part of this video. If you guys are interested in entering for your chance to win a brand new Indian Challenger customized by Carrie Hart that also supports a great benefit called The Good Ride, please check out omaze.com slash her two wheels. I will have that link down in the description and in the pinned comment. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Have fun riding. It's what we're here for. And until my next one, you be good and I will see you later. Oh. <laughs>